my first grade. Today's story is called Animals of the Sonoran Desert Habitat. Our learning objectives are to review characteristics of Arctic habitats, identify characteristics of the desert habitat, demonstrate an understanding of the word camouflage, and then write and draw about characteristics of the desert habitat. Our key vocabulary for today are camouflage, carnivore, herbivores, omnivore, and scavengers. Camouflage is a verb, and it means to blend in with surroundings. So the green color of leaf insects helps to camouflage them in the forest. Carnivore is a noun, and a carnivore is an animal that eats only other animals or meat. A polar bear is a carnivore that eats seal and fish. Herbivores is a noun, and herbivores are animals that eat only plants. My pet rabbits are herbivores and eat only plants. Omnivore is a noun, and an omnivore is an animal that eats both plants and other animals. A grizzly bear is an omnivore that eats fish as well as berries. Scavengers. Scavengers is a noun. Scavengers are animals that eat meat and waste left by other animals. Those rats are quite the scavengers. They ate all the leftovers in the alley. All right, so let's talk about um, the tundra, well, the Arctic, <clears throat> the Arctic habitats that we learned about last time. We talked about Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean. What was the climate like? That's like the weather. What was the climate like? It was cold and windy. What about the water? It was really cold, right? And it was hard for animals to live in it because it was so cold. And it had lots of ice, right? What about the ground? The ground. It was covered in layers of snow and ice. And in the summer, it would get muddy. Uh, what about the plants? There weren't many plants and the plants that were there were really short because it was super windy and the plants had to be short so they wouldn't get blown away or so that they wouldn't get too cold and die. How about the animals? The animals had to adapt, right? A lot of them are white or light colored so that they blend in or are camouflaged. Um, they had, some of them had blubber or really thick um, fur coats to keep them warm. Their uh, appendages, so like their ears were short so that they weren't so exposed or left out unprotected into the cold. And what about adaptations? What does is, what is an, what is adapted mean? It means when something changes so that they can better live where they are, right? So the, um, the snow hair, their ears are shorter than normal hairs because it's so cold. And if their ears were longer, there would be too much of their ears exposed and they wouldn't be able to survive, right? So today we are going to be learning about a habitat called a desert and about some of the animals that live in that habitat. What do you know about deserts from our early world civilizations unit? There weren't many plants or animals. There's not much water, right? This is a picture of a desert. What do you see? Lots of sand, right? Not many plants, not many animals. How does this look different from the pictures that you saw in the Arctic? Well, there's no snow or no ice. So the temperature found in a desert is almost exactly the opposite of that found in the Arctic. The Arctic is very cold, whereas deserts are usually very hot. The Arctic is wet and muddy in the summer, whereas the desert is very dry and sandy. Do you think the animals that live in the Arctic also live in the desert? No, why not? 
because the ones that are in the Arctic have adapted for cold, wet um, climates, and that's not what the desert is like. What do you think that the animals that live in the desert might be like, and how do you think they might be different than the animals that live in the Arctic? Let's see if you're right. So, deserts are located in many different regions of the world, but today we are going to hear about a particular desert that is located in the northwestern part of Mexico and the southwestern part of the United States of Arizona, or in parts of the states of Arizona and California. Okay, right here. This particular desert located here is called the Sonoran Desert. Remember our key vocabulary. We have camouflage, carnivore, herbivores, omnivore, and scavengers. Listen carefully to find out more about the Sonoran Desert and how animals have adapted to living there. After nearly freezing and almost becoming a polar bear snack in the Arctic, I thought we should go somewhere where my whiskers and tail could thaw out and warm up. So I have brought you to the desert. There are many deserts all over the world. You know, you're in a desert when it doesn't rain very much. Many deserts can be very hot. Because it is so hot and dry, only certain types of plants and animals can live there. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert in the southwestern part of the United States and the northwestern part of Mexico. The temperature is quite hot during the day and it doesn't rain very much. The heat and lack of rain make it hard for some plants and animals to live in the desert. They must all be specially adapted to live in the very hot weather and survive in the very, with very little rain. How do they do it? Some plants can save and store water inside their plant parts when it, when it does rain. Other plants grow only in shady areas near mountains or rocks. Because there are very few plants that can be used as shelter, the animals have adapted to living in the desert, often seeking shelter underground to make their homes under the sand. Living underground helps them stay cool when it gets hot, and it keeps them hidden from other animals that may want to eat them for lunch. What do you see in this picture? cactus. Ouch! What did I walk into? Aha! Here is one plant that lives in the Sonoran Desert. The saguaro, the saguaro cactus is the world's largest cactus. Cacti don't have leaves. They have prickly spines instead, which is exactly why it hurts so much to touch this one. The incredible saguaro lives up for up to 200 years and in that time can grow as high as a house and can weigh as much as several cars. The most amazing thing about the saguaro is that it is a habitat in itself. That's right, not only is it, does it manage to live and thrive in the desert habitat by just being there, it provides food, water, and shelter to many different animals. Let me get climbing gear out and some gloves to protect from these sharp spines. I'll meet you at the top. You already know that it hardly ever rains in the desert, but when it does, the saguaro cactus saves and stores huge quantities of water in its roots and stems. The cactus saves extra water and uses it to survive during those times when it is very dry and does not rain. In the spring, white flowers grow on the saguaro. At night, when the desert cools, these flowers open up to show sweet nectar, which butterflies, bats, and birds feed on before the flower closes the next day. Uh, before the flowers close the next day when it once again becomes very hot. In the summer, red fruit begins to grow on the saguaro. Many animals eat the fruit of the cactus. Here is an interesting bird called the Gila woodpecker. The Gila pecks holes into the soft cactus with its beak to make its nest for its eggs. The Gila woodpecker is an omnivore. An omnivore is an animal that eats plants as well as other animals. Gilas feed on cactus fruit and wild berries as well as insects that have invaded the saguaro. Thankfully, I brought a sandwich, so I won't have to join these Gilas for a buggy lunch. It is really way too hot for a regular rat like me to live here. I'm glad I brought my fan with me. 
Interestingly enough, birds like this Gila woodpecker can live in the desert habitat because their feathers help protect them from the hot desert sun by trapping cool air next to their skin. Still, most birds only go out to feed in the early morning or in the evening when it's cooler outside. From noon to late afternoon, many of these birds seek shelter in the holes that they have dug in a cactus or in other shady places. Here's another bird that makes its home in the saguaro cactus, the elf owl. The elf owl is the world's smallest owl. It's only five inches long. That's just a bit bigger than one of your hands. It moves into nests that have been abandoned by Gila woodpeckers. When something is abandoned, that means that it has been left alone for good. This elf owl, like most owls, is nocturnal, which means that it rests during the day and wakes during the night to hunt for food. The elf owl is also a carnivore. A carnivore is an animal that eats only other animals, no plants. It uses its large eyes to hunt in the dark night for bugs that live in the desert. Most owls eat mice, and I'm sad to say, rats. But I think I'm safe from the elf owl because I'm bigger than it is. That's pretty crazy to think about, that the rat is even bigger than this um, owl. Oh, look, here comes a desert cottontail rabbit, another animal that lives in the Sonoran Desert. The desert cottontail looks a, a little like the Arctic hare we saw in the tundra but it has larger ears and long back legs. So what were some of the ways that the Arctic hare had adapted to the Arctic tundra? It had smaller ears, so less of it was exposed to the cold, and it had white fur to blend in, right? It also had those large wide back feet so that it could run fast on the snow. Desert cottontail rabbits are herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat only plants, no animals. The desert cottontail eats grass and even cacti. Smaller animals like the desert cottontail always need to watch out for larger animals in the desert that might eat them. Many animals and plants are part of a cycle called the food chain. You will more, learn more about the food chain in the next read lab. Coyotes, for instance, like to eat rabbits. In fact, there is a coyote coming this way, so let's stay up here and watch it. Coyotes are found all over the United States, including the Sonoran Desert. As you can see, the coyote has a light tan colored coat that helps reflect the sun's rays and camouflage it. Remember, to camouflage something means to make it blend in with its surroundings. The color of the desert sand, the color of the coyote's fur blends in with the color of the desert sand, so it is difficult for other animals to see the coyote in the desert background. Coyotes are carnivals, like the elf owls. Coyotes have very good senses of smell, hearing, and vision, and they can run very fast, which means they are excellent hunters. They are also scavengers. Scavengers are animals that eat meat and waste left behind by other animals. Coyotes live in dens, which, makes, which they make by burrowing into the ground. I think this one has smelled something because he's just run off. Now I'm getting down from this cactus before another coyote comes along to make me its dinner. It seems like rats are on the menu everywhere I go. All right, if you need to hop up and take a wiggle break, go ahead and do that. So were your predictions about whether or not the desert animals were gonna be different from the Arctic animals correct? So did you say that the Arctic animals were gonna be the same or different? And were the Arctic animals the same or were they different? They were different, right? So I want you to describe the weather and temperature of the Sonoran Desert. It was really dry and hot, not much rain. Were there many plants and animals that lived in the desert? No, why not? Because it's hot and very dry. How are the Arctic and the Sonoran Desert different? Hmm, let's think about their temperature or their climate. The Arctic was really cold and could be really wet. And the desert was really hot and also really dry, right? How are they the same? Well, 
Both habitats are similar in the way that animals and plants have to live in each that live in each of those habitats have to adapt to very difficult conditions, right? It's not easy to live in the uh, Arctic and it's not easy to live in the desert because they're extremes, right? It's extremely hot or it's extremely cold. It's extremely dry or it's pretty wet. How did some of those animals adapt to living there? Some of them came out at night when it wasn't so hot. Some of them can store water, right? In the read aloud, you heard, the coyote has a light tan colored coat to camouflage it. Say the word camouflage. Camouflage. Can you say it in a whisper voice? Camouflage. How about in a robot voice? Camouflage. Camouflage means to blend in with surroundings. Often the color of the object or animal is similar to the background, which makes it hard for other animals to see. The Arctic hare's white coat serves to camouflage it in the snowy Arctic tundra. I'm gonna describe something to you. You should decide how you could camouflage it. For example, if I say a green leaf, you could say, I could camouflage that by placing it on, a green, on green grass. Okay, here we go. A white piece of paper. Hmm. You could camouflage it by putting it on a white floor or on the whiteboard, right? How about a black cat? What if we were trying to camouflage Emmy? Placing it outside at night, putting her on my table, which is black. Okay. How about an Arctic hare? Sticking it out in the snow. How about a yellow pencil? How could you camouflage a yellow pencil? Put it with some yellow flowers or maybe put it with something, put it next to some bananas. All right, let's see. Here we go. All right, so did we review the characteristics of Arctic habitats? Yeah. Did we identify characteristics of the desert habitat? Mm hmm Were we able to use the word camouflage? And then in a little bit, you are going to write and draw about the characteristics of the desert habitat. Awesome work, guys. See you next time.